reap what you sow. This story had been truly happened in the past, which is about a man named Thomas. He had started as a veterinarian in a small village. After years of experience, he came to a city and opened a small clinic, but not for pets, it was opened for humans. The clinic was not a legal opening. He had not been certified for opening a clinic yet, that why he chose the suburb to run his clinic. Most of the people who came there were poor people. They weren't able to afford healthcare treatments at the big hospitals in the city center. His clinic was quite small, but many people come there for a healthcare check daily. Most of them were all low-income workers. So he had works to do every day. There were not just only people around his area, but also the people from the suburbs around the city. They came there because Thomas's services and medicines cost much cheaper than a big hospital, and he always showed that he was a kind person. He asked his patient, Uncle Jack, if he could feel any better. The old man replied that he felt very much better than earlier. He didn't want to take any of the injections anymore. He wanted to have some medicines to bring home. Thomas always wore a white blouse and tried to be nice to his patient like that. He told Uncle Jack that the old man needed two more injections to cure his sickness completely. If he wanted to stop there, he would be sick again. Most of his patients came to him because they got ailments such as headaches or flu. If someone got into a severe health issue, he didn't have the gut and refused to give them treatments. He knew that he didn't have that much knowledge to cure them out. Thomas thought that as long as he didn't harm anyone, he would be good and be able to run his clinic. One day, his clinic was deserted, he was playing a video game on his computer. There was a woman who stepped into the clinic. Thomas quickly turned off his computer and welcomed the woman. He asked if the woman felt unhealthy anywhere. The woman shyly replied that she wanted to buy anti-inflammatory medicine. Thomas looked at the woman in front of him from top to toes. He always tried to give his patient a careful look like that once they came to find him. He could guess his patient's status, wealthy or not, then choose medicine for them, an expensive or a cheap one. Basically, he based their status on selling and giving them proper treatment, not based on their health condition. Based on his experiences and how the woman looked like, he could 80% sure that the woman was in gynecology trouble. Thomas tended to tell her that her situation was more serious than it was to charge more money. He pretended to ask her what was her issue. If she wanted to buy anti-inflammatory, she gotta tell him how was she being since that kind of medicine was unable to take an arbitrary. He needed to know what the exact symptom the woman was at that moment to give her the best advice. Once the woman heard his question, she was faltered to tell him about her symptoms. Thomas confidently told her that she shouldn't be worried like that. She just told him what her symptoms were. Thomas was there to help her out. The earlier she told him and gave herself the proper treatment, the better. Then he convinced her and took her in to have a check. But Thomas had not enough knowledge to make any healthcare diagnoses. He just pretended to check up and played the doctor role to make a living as usual. Thomas pretended to take the blood sample from her and then brought the sample under the monoscopic examination. He pretended to be serious, out of the blue, as if he found something extremely bad. He said that the woman was in a tough situation. The woman heard his fake diagnose. She worriedly asked him what happened to her. What kind of sickness did she catch? Thomas seriously replies that she caught syphilis already. That was a bacteria infection usually spread by sexual contact. The woman looked very scared when hearing that. Thomas walked to the table and started to give her the medicine. He spoke up to comfort her afterward. She shouldn't worry. He was able to cure her. That was his responsibility. The woman didn't seem to catch syphilis, in fact. He just prescribed her some mild anti-inflammatory medicines to be safe once she took them. 
she would never die because of those medicines. The more medicine he sold, the more money he earned. Thomas gave her some kind of medicine and told her not to tell anyone in her family about that. Since the moment she heard the sickness she was being, she sat there quietly. She faced down as if she was drowning in her thoughts. The woman paid for her medical bill and left silently. Thomas told her that she could go back to his place to recheck her health if she outed the medicine. He continued if she didn't take her treatment well her situation would get worse. To be honest, Thomas didn't care about his patient's health. He was just afraid that his patient would never come back to him. If she didn't get back for rechecking, he wouldn't make any more money from her. He had given and selling innocuous medicine to his patient and took advantage of that. Three days later, Thomas was being in the clinic alone and calculating stuff in the storage. Out of the blue, a man was carrying a woman in his back, behind him was another man. They came there and called Thomas in a panic that they needed help from him. The two men put the woman in the chair. Thomas could see the woman was unconscious. That was an urgent case, so he quickly came for a check. Thomas worriedly asked what happened to her. One of the men told him that the woman had tried to kill herself by pesticide drinking, and she wanted his help. Thomas came closer to the woman and looked at the motionless woman's face in front of him. He was in shock, he knew that woman. The woman came to his place three days earlier. He recalled that he examined that she catch syphilis, a serious sickness spread by sexual contact. Thomas frozen for a moment then pretended as if he saw her the first time, checked up for her as usual, then shook his head. Thomas turned to her family and told them that it was too late to save her. She had died already. As usual, he would tell the family of the patient to take them to the hospital instantly, but at that time, deep down, he knew that her death surely related to his wrong diagnose earlier. Thomas asked her husband why she suicided, the husband replied that he didn't know the reason. At that time, Thomas gave a light sigh. At least there was no one knew about his wrong diagnose. While talking to her family, Thomas felt that the woman was likely to grab his shirt. He yelled out in fear. Thomas glared at the woman and saw the woman was still immobilized there. Her hands just fell off to the chair. Then he called them an ambulance at ease. The ambulance had come and picked the woman up already. Seeing the ambulance faded out from his vision, he got an insecure feeling. He was too afraid that the woman's death was related to him. And so, Thomas decided to close the clinic out. He had made up an excuse that he had to solve out his family stuff at his hometown. He was worried sick that the woman's family would get him in big trouble if they found out the truth. He returned to his hometown and didn't go out in days. He found an excuse to send his wife and kid to his parents-in-law. He could not sleep night after night. To be exact, he didn't have a gut to sleep. He was too scared of seeing the dead patient come to find him in the dreams. Every time he looked at the door, Thomas was scared to death. He was scared that the police would come and took him to jail any time. But everything turned out to be fine after three days of being home. Thomas gave a relieved sigh. He thought that everything had turned to be fine already. No one had found out the truth. That night, he drank a few cups of wine. He got a bit drunk and passed out on the couch. It was in summer, but he felt it was colder and colder in the house. He felt that someone was staring at him from behind the couch. Thomas woke up. He looked back to check who that was. He was scared to death once he could see the woman who had suicided days earlier. She stood there, frozen and stared at him. That was the one he intentionally gave a wrong examination to take advantage of. She had drunk the pesticide to kill herself, and at that moment, her spirit had found him and wanted to bring the truth to light. She blamed him for why he did that to her why he cheated on her.
The woman snarled that in her throat multiple times. Her eyes got scared to Thomas. He wanted to run away, but his legs were completely limp. He fell to the ground backward. He knew that the woman wanted to take revenge on him. He begged for her mercy repeatedly in fear. He told her that he just had a little mistake. Please let him go, don't kill him. The patient's spirit cornered him out. He dragged his feet on the ground. Suddenly, she screamed aloud with extreme anger. She came closer to that evil fake doctor. At that moment, Thomas clearly saw there were a bunch of larvae came out from her eyes and mouth. Those larvae out and moved around disgusting. Those larvae were moving around and fell to the ground. They were moving all around Thomas's house as well. Thomas yelled out and moaned. His back reached the wall already. There was no way for him to get away from the woman at that moment. Then, she used her hand which was covering with those moving larvae, reaching him. Thomas closed his eyes out and screamed aloud scarily. Thomas wanted to vomit, and he woke up from that scary dream. He looked at the couch, at the wall. There was no scary woman there. Everything was just a dream. He gave a relieved sigh, eyed to the ground, and got frightened from what he saw then. There were many larvae on the ground. They moved to his clothes and the couch, even got all over his body already. He felt off in fears, he shook his body in depression, he was very confused from what happened to him. Ever since he experienced the dream, Thomas always felt his face was very itchy, especially at the place where the woman had touched him. His itchy got more serious, he came for a checkup at the hospital, but they could not find out the root cause. There was no proper treatment for him, he eventually saw he got many big pimples on his body. It made him uncomfortable, itchy and hurt him badly everywhere. His situation turned bad, he looked very scary even to his family, no one would like to come close to him. He led his family away from him, he was too scared to spread that sickness to them. A few years later, he had recovered from those pimples which had grown all around his body earlier, but that had left him lots of scars. As a result of that, his face nearly deformed, he looked ugly and scary. With the new look, he didn't want to expose his face to the public. He was unable to find a job, his clinic had been closed in years as well. He had to collect bottles for a living. Thomas knew that was all because of that woman. She had turned him to be an ugly and sick man at that moment. That was her revenge. He always thought about what he had done in years. He regretted his wrongdoing since it caused someone to die. The woman's family didn't know what he did, and he just wanted his family to have a peaceful life afterward. Regarding himself, he accepted the fact that he had to live a miserable life. With his ugly face and body onwards, he reaped what he sowed.